Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture number 8 in the blockchain series. So far we have studied the blockchain itself in detail, what it is, how does it work, what are its components, what are its varieties. Then we looked at how to build a blockchain and we looked at some very common applications of blockchain that is in the area of fintech and other areas. We also looked at looked briefly at the underlying technology that is cryptography and the ways of attaining consensus within blockchain and uh, today we will look at and also the various platforms that are available to build a blockchain. So, so far all the applications predominantly the applications that we have seen have been in the area of financial technology whether it is uh, cryptocurrencies or settlement among various organizations, financial institutions or lending, P2P lending and uh, various other as payment systems and for example, Ripple being a payment system. Uh, various aspects, various cases that we have seen in blockchain have been predominantly in the area of fintech. However, blockchain is finding lot of usage in every other area. So, in, the, in this session, we will look at four examples of blockchain being applied in non-fintech areas in logistics, traceability, auto service and more importantly crowdfunding, it is turning out to be a very powerful and useful tool for crowdfunding various initiatives. In fact, many of these various cryptocurrencies themselves are being launched as crowdfunded initiatives. So, let us get started with the various other use cases for blockchain. The very first example I want to talk is something that I already briefly touched upon in my in the very first class. This was a class project done to provide auto service across the country wherever we are. The way today it is typically we have one home mechanic whom we go to if we if I need my car to be serviced there is a mechanic about 2 kilometers away from my home I take it to him. But what if I am traveling across the country I drive from Mysore to Tamil Nadu I drive to Kerala I might be trying to recently I drove from Mysore to Sangli in Maharashtra and these long trips what happens if my car breaks down? How do I locate a mechanic number one? Number two, how do I trust that mechanic? Different different countries have solved this, in, they have been different solutions for this problem in different locations, different countries. For example, the, in the United States, there is an organization called Automobile Association of America. Every year you pay them a subscription like 50 dollars. So, they provide various services. For example, they give me a card wherever in the country if I am traveling if my if I am in New York my car breaks down somewhere, somewhere in Ohio I can go to any mechanic who says I am going to accept auto triple A automotive automobile association of America's card I can get my car serviced there with the confidence that triple A has certified this mechanic I can trust this mechanic. The mechanic will come and tow my car for free within certain limits because I am a member of automobile association of America. In India companies have tried to replicate this model various companies have come up with a subscription model saying that you give us 5000 rupees a year 10000 rupees a year we select these mechanics and wherever you go you can go to those mechanics will tell you who they are they will provide service wherever you are if you break down on the road the mechanic will come and service your car this is normally called as roadside assistance now one number one these are very expensive and number two that the mechanics where I can take this car is limited to those who are subscribed to that company and that may not be very extensive it depends on how extensive that company is, how extensive their network is. It and my quality of service I receive depends on that. Instead one experiment we tried is why not we develop a network where any independent mechanic may come there for the first time does not matter. Once in a while they will enter into this network, provide services up to certain quality based on certain guaranteed quality and get paid for that. And I have the assurance that wherever I travel across the country, 
I can always locate a mechanic nearby to get my car serviced. And uh, doing this within a city is easy. You can say set up a simple uh, internet uh, website where all the mechanics sign up and they provide the services whenever I log in and they log in and get it done. How do we do it across the country? How do we do it for mechanics who just enter the system once in a while? Remember, in, in the, the case of private companies, the mechanics also have to pay a subscription to the company to be part of it. How do we avoid that? Mechanic, suppose as I gave the example recently, I was I travelled to Sangli recently. What if my car broke down in Sangli in Maharashtra where my hometown is Mysore? I probably may never go there again. So, if I have to go to a mechanic, that mechanic will service my car only once, that is it. So, there should be no cost of entering the network for the mechanic also. So, the best way to do this, to try this out, we discovered was to try a blockchain. We set up a blockchain where members can come in. As we know, most uh, this is going to be a permission blockchain, but cost of transaction is so low that signing up a member is going to be very little. And once they do a transaction, they may never have to do a transaction again, that entry will be there and that is it. So, let us look at some of the details of this particular use case. The objective was to provide automotive maintenance and road service as a subscription at a lower cost, higher reliability and more importantly availability by developing a network of independent auto shops. These auto shops are not members of any chain or any company, they are independent mechanics, but we give them a method to come to the network, provide the service and be paid for it. Our unique selling proposition, it is a marketing term, is roadside assistance beyond a certain radius. Wherever I go, I may drive to Meghalaya, Meghalaya, my car may break down there, I should be able to get service out there and service across the country outside our home base. The key challenge as I briefly mentioned right now is to how to bring in independent auto shops in any location into the network for a possible one off service. My car broke down, it needed a starter, I took it to some mechanic in Sangli, that person is going to work on my car once. And if I do not go ever again, uh, it does not matter. He just only the transaction once and goes out of the network. And the cost of the transaction itself is quite low for the mechanic and for me also. So, who are the stakeholders? The mechanics in my home area, these are the ones I am going to go mostly, probably the one my next door neighbor, he is going to be one of the key stakeholders. And um, I can even set up a service with him, I can set up a subscription with him saying that per year I am going to give you so much, whenever I go you provide, he can do that. Remote site mechanics, there is no central company, there is only a blockchain and individual mechanics can take subscriptions from each of us and the remote site mechanics and there are vehicle owners. As you can see there are three types of nodes here, there are these home mechanics who offer me a subscription. I give him X amount of money, I get X amount of services. If I travel remotely, that person will sign a smart contract with the remote site mechanic and pay for the services done out there. The remote site mechanics come into the system whenever they provide any service. They may not have any subscription as such and they get paid with the assurance that if they do any work on my car, they get paid because my home site mechanic is going to establish a smart contract with them and pay them for the service. And I am the third node, I, I am the vehicle owner, I am the one who I pay the subscription to my mechanic and I certify when I am in a remote location, how does my mechanic know that the work done was up to correct standard by the remote mechanic. So, in those cases I as a vehicle owner I certify that I needed this particular starter, I needed a jump start or something, I go on the blockchain and certify that this remote mechanic did the work correctly, then the smart contract will fire and my mechanic pays the remote mechanic. So, in this case I pay for an annual subscription, I get a better cost because I get a package of services, I do not have to pay on a service by service basis that it will work out cheaper for me. My mechanic gets a fixed income, fixed subscription every year whether I use those services or not and he does most of the servicing, he only has to pay when my car breaks down a remote location, only then he has to pay for the subscription. That way he gets a predictable st revenue stream based on which he can provide these services. So, all this as we have seen can be easily done with a blockchain. So, we can set up a blockchain which will be a public permission blockchain with predetermined smart contracts. That is, this is a blockchain uh, as we have seen there are three types of nodes, two types of nodes may have to be pre-qualified. Me as a vehicle buyer, all vehicle buyers are pre-qualified nodes 
we are already uh, we are only allowed to verify and approve smart contracts we have the home mechanics who are the controlling nodes in this blockchain they are the ones each mechanic can take a subscription from each of their subscribers they will all be treated as members of this blockchain and they are the ones who drop the smart contracts the remote site mechanics are the ones who come into the picture these nodes come into the picture whenever one of these vehicle owners approaches them they enter into the picture propose a smart contract which the local uh, mechanic approves service gets done i approve the quality of the service smart contract fires money get trans gets transferred from my home mechanic to the remote site mechanic and as you can see any of the members should be allowed the, the remote remote site mechanics should be allowed to come in any of them should be allowed to come into the network except that it's permission they have to be approved even every time my local mechanic has to approve based on the smart contract there is no mining as such here the transactions get added whenever any remote mechanic comes in the remote mechanic adds a transaction take a typical scenario the full cycle i pay a subscription to my home mechanic i get my work done i go to some remote location it my car breaks down i go to the nearest mechanic that mechanic assuming that he has internet and access to the blockchain which most of them do today on their smart contracts and their smartphones he gets into the blockchain logs in as a node as a provider node and sends a smart contract to my home mechanic that this is my estimate this car needs a starter it needs a set of wipers it needs a, a uh, engine tune up and this is my cost based on some negotiation my mechanic will approve the smart contract so some smart contract gets set i give my car to the remote mechanic he works on it fixes it i go to the the blockchain as a vehicle owner node i approve i approve that the work has been done so the transaction gets entered that the work was done satisfactorily on this condition being met the smart contract fires and the pre approved limit pre approved uh, uh, charges for fixing my car gets deducted from my mechanic gets deposited to the remote mechanic everybody is happy all of us can see the transaction that was done i can see that all the work was done i can see what was the estimate my mechanic sees what the estimate was and then he sees that i have approved i have approved the work done and the remote uh, mechanic gets paid and there is no cost for subs subscribing to this network the remote mechanic doesn't have to pay any cost to get into the blockchain unlike with the various blockchain setup with various companies they are both the parties pay i pay to get a subscription annually for getting the services provided by this company remote mechanics also often have to pay to be a part of this network so that they are assured of business here there is no that cost they don't have to pay that cost they can without cost get into the blockchain send a smart card to smart card to my mechanic and um, he can approve and pay for me the attraction is wherever i go i can always find a mechanic for my home mechanic the attraction is they don't have to sign up with any company they can give the same services that a big automotive company can provide being a single mechanic but being part on the blockchain so for them also there is no cost of signing up with a bigger company for them it's pretty much also free so this is a simple example but a very powerful example of the kind of things we can do with a blockchain an independent mechanic can also offer services a group of independent mechanics can offer services matching that provided by big automotive companies at a much lower cost and always with providing better service because i go to the local mechanic because i trust him i like the way he works with me so they can give this personalized service they can give better service at a lower cost and they have the same capabilities they can provide the service across the country thanks to the power of blockchain so there is no incentive there is no mining as such each party enters the transaction at their uh, effort and they if the verification has to be done by a third party there may have to be sign in incentive but i can eliminate that by making the vehicle owner himself or herself being the verifying party the one verification that is needed in this case is that the work has been done satisfactorily this is one simple use case of how blockchain can change the whole industry previously it needed a national organization like automotive association of america or in india various companies like mahindra and all are um, coming up with this chains which, uh, which is a quite an expensive affair and they have so many constraints 
only these cars they consider they don't consider other type of cars and things like that now a single mechanic or a group of mechanics in a given location can be a threat to such an organization in business because the whole uh, we also briefly talked about blockchain being a disruptive uh, tool so this is one way blockchain can disrupt the the national automotive service chains one example and which is not a fintech example let's look at a second such example so having looked at this example let's briefly look at what are the situations in which blockchains work the best and we'll go back and see that this this example meets all those conditions apart from fintech blockchain based applications have wide applicability in a range of business realms including logistics supply chain crowdfunding auditing and so on blockchains are most useful in cases in which require establishing trust between transparently between any two parties in this case for example in automotive case there is needs to be a trust established on an ongoing basis between my home site mechanic and a remote mechanic on a transaction to transaction basis blockchains let us do that on every transaction all they have to do is to draw the smart contract agree upon it once they have done they don't have to trust each other the smart contract fires and fulfills the terms of the servicing contract require transparent traceability of transactions again let's go back to this automotive example i let's say i replaced a starter i my car, my car broke down somewhere in hyderabad i am from mysore my starter was replaced and after after 6 months it's it breaks down it came with a 6 month warranty let's say it breaks down within that period so if i go to my mechanic and tell him that look it broke down what is the problem why can can you fix it again my mechanic should be able to go back to the blockchain and find out who replaced that starter so traceability is there at any point any point he can go back and find out who replaced the starter how much was paid who approved it and if he can always prove to me that it was done by a third mechanic and i approved the transaction so he can replace it again but he may not be responsible for its breaking down so at any point point if we have to to find out what exactly happened who did what and who will be responsible for the consequences blockchain always gives that information at any point so we have traceability we can go back 10 years if necessary and if the starter was replaced 8 years back i can go back and find out who replaced the the starter when where and how much it cost me and things like that so which is again very useful in a case like maintaining uh, today cars are lasting much longer my car is already 10 years old so traceability in such a case becomes very very important and uh, we will also see the same example a similar example in the next session when we are looking at examples of blockchain in governance how this traceability can come in handy again in the automotive field and third need immutable and verifiable record of transactions not only can we trace the transactions once done cannot be changed like i go to a mechanic get my work done i cannot go back change my mind and say the work was not done or my mechanic cannot erase the transaction and say my work was not done i am not going to pay once the once the transaction enters into the picture after we agree to everything and the, trans, the smart contract fires we always have a record of unchangeable verifiable transactions traceability essentially so this any situation in, in which these are the driving factors and the fourth one of course which is not very critical in this case but would be very critical in many other cases is speed as we have seen in many many blockchains transactions get reflected immediately once a transaction is done it gets reflected immediately and if there is a smart contract attached to that that particular transaction that the transaction also fires and the results become uh, visible immediately we have seen one more example yesterday in fintech field in terms of issuing a letter a letter of credit again a normal letter of credit may take days together to work we have seen that we can reduce it to a matter of few hours with a blockchain so if these are the requirements in any situation blockchains are an ideal solution to provide the benefits of getting the transaction done the benefits being speed transparency and low cost of blockchains so we look at some more examples in the non fintech area one very common application of blockchain today 
is in logistics. Logistics is a essential part of supply chain, it is that part where material moves from location to location. It may move through a series of uh, different different uh, transport, let us say for example, uh, I, I import apples from Washington, you know in big bazaar we find Washington apples, I import of apples from Washington state in the US, consider how it moves. It gets picked from the uh, field from the apple orchards, the farmer puts it on a truck, the trucks get bring them to a processing center where they may be all be cleaned and put it in a cold storage. It may he may bring it using a pickup truck to this center. At the processing center, they may be all be put it put on a after all the processing, they may be put on a refrigerated container. This container is shipped from the processing center either by rail or by a truck to the nearest port, maybe Seattle or something. On the port, it gets loaded onto the ship. The ship takes one week, two weeks, or whatever it is, and reaches my nearest port, say Chennai in India. In Chennai, it's gets it's get it gets taken off from the, the ship. A truck or a or a trailer moves it to the uh, warehouse yard where it has to clear customs. Once the customs are cleared, another truck picks up this container, puts it on the train. The train brings it to my nearest train station, where another truck picks it up from the train, puts it in the warehouse. So, as you can see, there are different different modes of transport. Fortunately, containers at least have standardized the unit we ship them, but for bulk items even that would not work. So, this one standard unit of one container goes through different modes of transport before it reaches. This entire chain of moving the material typically is called the logistics aspect of that. Uh, there are very sophisticated softwares to manage all this, but in along with the material moving documents also have to move. The farmer has to send an invoice to the processing center, the processing center has to an invoice to me, I have to open a letter of credit and on top of it the shipping document, the bill of lading and things like that have to move along with the item, it has to reach the port where it have after disembargation, it has to clear customs. The customs clearance document has to come, when only those are produced the uh, processing center can give the letter of credit for approval and money gets transferred. So, along with the material also a lot of documents also travel along the way and blockchains uh, sometimes the documents take longer to travel due to various uh, bureaucratic red tape processes, quarantine me measures and things like that then the physical goods of material itself. So, blockchains are, are turning are having finding lot of application in making this movement of documents much faster. So, we are the time taken is essentially limited to time taken to move the material, the documents themselves do not do not even need to move, the documents are all stored on a blockchain in a verifiable format and it is in a controlled blockchain. So, only some people can uh, make the transactions, only some people can approve and it is available for anyone to see. So, delays due to red tape and uh, national holidays and things like that uh, will not affect the movement of documents. So, and in industry we know that the less time a material says spends in transit better for us because, because we have to carry that inventory, it is what is called carrying the inventory. The longer we have to carry the inventory, the longer in the material stays between the producer and the consumer, the more it costs. So, if you can compress this process, it is going to be the transaction is going to be cheaper for us, the cost is going to be less for the consumer and processing the documents also we have seen is going to cost, there is a cost to processing documents through various middle parties, even that cost can be either eliminated or significantly reduced. And third is tracking, so blockchain can significantly speed up the processing of documents especially in international trades. As it happens the example I gave is an example of international trade, where often times as I mentioned documents may take longer to travel than the physical goods, this can be reduced significantly. Significantly improve tracking of goods and documents, buyers can plan more effectively. In a, in a non blockchain world, I have to depend on various people to tell me where the shipping is. Once the farmer gives it to the processing center, the processing center has to tell me where my good, my container of apples is they have to send me an email or I have to call them or something like that. Once it goes to the port, the um, 
the handling agency has to tell me where it is and once it goes to the ship, the shipping company has to update me. I have to go to their site, I have to call them and find out where the ship is. Once it reaches the port in my home, home port like in Chennai, again my clearance agent has to tell me that the item has come, it has, to, it has cleared customs, it is sitting in the demurrage area or warehouse. So, whereas in, I have to depend on people, we have to depend on various entities and people to tell us at every step where how do I track the goods, the tracking of the goods. If all this information is transparently put on a blockchain, the moment farmer sends it to the processing center, processing center enters, it enters an entry into the blockchain, into a single blockchain. Right now, they may enter into their website, I have to go to their website. Now, they will enter into a blockchain saying that ship apples in raw form. Once they put it onto the port, they will make an entry to the blockchain, container delivered to port. When the clearing agent takes that container, gets it cleared and puts it on the ship, container on ship, he will make an entry into the blockchain to one single source of each of the indi parties independently updating transactions, I can track where the item is, everyone can. The processing center is in interested too because they get repayment only when I get the container here. So, every one of these parties, we do not have to depend on others, we can go to blockchain and trace or track where our item, where our shipment is and based on that I can plan. If apples come well on time, I can plan to clear my shelves in my grocery store. Otherwise, if it is delayed, I can put something else on my shelves in the grocery store, so that customers can get their choice. I can, it helps my planning, it helps to clear space in my warehouse, it helps me to plan my inventory. It can reduce the overall delivery time, tracking is done, there is no delay there, documents are processed automatically, transparently. So, the net time taken at every step gets compressed a little and overall delivery time is reduced and this is very critical for perishable goods like for example, apples. Um, even under refrigeration, they can only be stored for so long. Flowers have a shorter lifetime, they may be refrigerated, but lifetime even being refrigerated is much shorter. So, the more we can compress the time required, better for us, wastage is reduced, costs are reduced. In fact, most of the time flowers are shipped by air freight, not even by shipping. It can reduce the cost of transport, of carrying inventory as I mentioned. Anyone who has studied business knows that if I have to, if goods are between the producer and the consumer, if it is sitting somewhere in between, it is going to cost money to carry them. The faster we get it, can get it from producer to the consumer, reduce, redu less is the cost of carrying the inventory that can be reduced very significantly. And as I mentioned just now, it can make a critical difference, especially for shipping perishable goods. One day saved in the overall transmission cycle, two days saved can make a difference between us realizing full value for our goods or us being forced to junk the whole thing. If flowers wilt for example, there is no value, there is no market for wilting flowers, I may have to junk the whole thing, lose the whole value. So, when time is critical, blockchains can make a difference in compressing it and consequently reducing your loss or wastage and reduce the overall cost. So, example of shipping flowers and other highly perishable goods. IBM is a company which is actively in this field of helping companies manage the logistics using blockchain. They have developed a case study. We are going to look at a uh, presentation both in the graphic form and in the video form. Let me bring up the graphic. It is jointly developed by IBM and the shipping company Maersk. The paper trail of a shipping container. These are all shipping containers carrying flowers. How do the documents? As I explained, as materials move, documents also have to go with them. How do the documents move along with the container? How blockchain will help manage and track the paper trail of tens of millions of shipping containers across the world? Fact number one, ocean freight industry accounts for 90 percent of goods in global trade. So, a small amount of goods are shipped by road and a, small, a smaller percentage across the world in international trade and a smaller per percentage is by air, it is ships, ocean shipping is the one which predominantly carries bulk of the uh, transportation in the world, 90 percent of global goods in trade, goods in trade are carried by shipping, but transport remains highly dependent on a flood of paper that is never digitized. Physical paper has to follow 
as the container goes even those who are done shipping in India will know once a truck goes that way bill the road bill roadway bill has to go physically along with the truck and whenever an inspector stops the driver has to produce that. So, documents are not digitized now it, they are being slowly digitized in India historically physical paper had to move, but even otherwise transport remains highly dependent on a flood of paper that is never digitized. So, here is an example of a highly perishable goods shipping flowers overseas the journey from grower to retailer is complex. The value of global flower trade industry is nearly 1 US dollar uh, 105 billion US dollars it is a huge industry. There are many companies in India this field is called floriculture there are companies in India also who are very highly active in floriculture they export flowers to Europe, U US and various places the global business is worth 105 billion dollars and we think flowers are light consider this number 700,000 or 7 lakh tons of cut flowers are shipped each, each year across countries. Shipping information must pass through many hands increasing the potential for delays in transport and remember flowers are highly perishable and they also sometimes may be dependent on the time of the year for example, Valentine's day is one time in a period of the year where flowers are highly in demand February 13th February flowers are very high demand February 14th they are in more demand February 15th worthless there is no demand. So, they are also dependent on time. So, one shipment can require sign off from 30 unique organizations and up to 200 communications one, one bunch of flowers may require 30 unique organizations I have to approve the uh, shipment. One last form or late approval could leave the container stuck in port and the entire process can take more than a month of which the actual transportation time may be as little as 2 weeks or less by air it takes only a few hours, but still the overall process may take up to a month. Imagine the same process were digitized using blockchain technology blockchain a shared distributed ledger something we know already can trace the containers path to the supply chain with exceptional transparency and security. Transparency because whenever anybody makes any change visible to everyone. So, we know whether the change was valid or not security because only authorized parties are allowed to make a change and once the transaction goes in they cannot go back and change if they have done some mistake you cannot correct mistakes will. So, that provides security integrity to the data. So, the flower grower readies the product for international shipment shipment information is added to the blockchain or in the example I gave the apple grower adds the shipment information to the blockchain as the container awaits transport to the port officials submit approvals electronically. So, when this apples are waiting in the processing center document is sent for approval ahead of time from the processing center blockchain confirms the transaction and executes a smart contract releasing the shipment. So, uh, approval is done a letter of credit is issued automatically on the blockchain the shipment can go on to the port the container is loaded onto the ship here is a big ship with lot of containers today ships can carry up to 20,000 containers one big ship can carry up to 20,000 containers all parties have end to end visibility of the containers progress to the supply chain I as an importer somebody sitting in Europe as an importer for flowers I as an importer for apples in India I know exactly where it is what it is waiting for I do not have to call somebody de depend on them updating the information go to their website it is there on the blockchain. The container arrives at the destination port and clears customs in my case Chennai in the other case it could be Rotterdam or something like that. Retailer receives the flowers on time and signs electronically information is relayed back to the blockchain. The moment container is handed over to me I sign off on a document saying that I have received immediately the smart contract fires releases the letter of credit the part every other party gets paid including the grower with blockchain delays will be reduced resulting in significant cost savings for all parties they release their money faster lesser cost of money my inventory time is reduced uh, shipping time is optimized. So, reduced cost for all of us most importantly to the customer blockchain helps enable unprecedented secure transparency across the global supply chain at any point we can go and see what what has been done at any point we can go back and see what was done not just what is happening now 
at any point we can if some some mistake happens instead of flowers i get a um, i get a container of cement i can always go back and see what happened where the mistake happened and that cannot be changed traceability this could increase worldwide gdp by almost 5% and total trade volume by 15% imagine worldwide gdp runs into trillions 5% of it also is in trillions so much it can increase and and volume trade volume also can increase by 15% which is very very significant blockchain can help all parties involved in a shipment so it can reduce or eliminate fraud and errors the grower thinks that he has sent me a shipment of apples i here get a shipment of textiles or cotton or um, cement or something like that so there is some mistake which has happened somewhere it can be eliminated because information is checked and and transparently checked at every stage improves inventory management i know when the container is reaching me accordingly i can clear my warehouse and make arrangements to have the shipment picked put on my shelves the total time spent in the process is reduced minimize courier costs because of reduction in paper uh, delays and paperwork and the couriers also when they know when they can when they can know transparently when the shipment is arriving at the ship they can also arrange for which ship is going to carry they can plan their fleet more effectively reduce delays from paperwork obviously reduce wastage in perishable goods if they reach us on time wastage is significantly reduced and identify issues faster if it is turning out that it's lay, lying at the customs yard without getting cleared i can expedite that the party on the other side or the party on this side we will focus on that focus on that to get the work faster so wherever there are issues they are identified quickly and addressed equally quickly ibm and musk are creating a solution for global logistics using blockchain learn more about it those who are interested this is one example of blockchain helping the logistics compressing the logistics making the logistics more efficient and more more inexpensive and more effective especially for perishable goods there is also a video associated with this let's take a look at that also the following is a demonstration of how ibm and mesk are partnering to digitize and simplify global trade using blockchain to create trust and transparency in the supply chain global trade functions much as it has since the introduction of the shipping container in 1956 as i mentioned the last innovation was invention of shipping shipping containers one advantage it brought was earlier we could send half a truck one truck different different units it standardized the, the shipping unit we now once items are loaded whatever the items are loaded they are loaded onto the container and it's a container which does bulk of the traveling which has standardized the unit manual paper based processes are still common and information about the status of goods is locked away in organizational silos today 90% of goods in global trade are carried by the shipping industry with the supply chain slowed by the complexity and sheer volume of point to point communication across a loosely coupled web of land transportation providers freight forwarders customs brokers governments ports and ocean carriers Processing documents and information for a container shipment is estimated to cost more than twice that of the actual physical transportation. IBM and Maersk are addressing this problem with a distributed permission platform accessible. Uh, for those who may not be knowing, IBM is one of the biggest computing companies. Maersk is one of the lar largest shipping companies in the world. And if you notice, they are talking about a permission blockchain. for by the supply chain ecosystem designed to exchange event data and handle document workflows Maersk and IBM are employing blockchain technology to create a global tamper proof system for digitizing trade workflow and tracking shipments end to end eliminating frictions including costly point to point communications the collaboration will launch with the potential ability to track millions of container journeys per year and integrate with customs authorities on selected trade lanes In a recent test by Maersk, shipping a single container of flowers from Kenya to the port of Rotterdam resulted in a stack of nearly 200 communications. Using this example, we will examine how blockchain has been implemented to create trust and security in the digitized document workflow and improve the efficiency of global supply chains. Here we can see each distinct entity involved in the transaction: the growers, export authorities, ports, customs, and importers. 
Shipping from the port of Mombasa requires signatures from three different agencies approving the export and six documents that describe the origin, chemical treatment, quality of the produce and customs duties. Firstly, using a PC or mobile device, the Kenyan farm submits a packing list that becomes visible to all participants. This action initiates a smart contract that enforces an export approval workflow between the three agencies. As each agency signs, the status is updated for all to see. Simultaneously, information about the inspection of the flowers, the seeding of the refrigerated container, the pickup by the trucker, and the approval from customs is communicated to the port of Mombasa, allowing them to prepare for the container. All actions relating to the documents and the fiscal goods are captured and shared. Which documents were submitted, when and by who, where the flowers are, and who is in possession of them, and the next steps in their journey. Flowers are perishable, so it's crucial that there are no delays or missteps. Blockchain provides a secure data exchange and a tamper-proof repository for these documents and shipping events. This system could significantly reduce delays and fraud, saving billions of dollars annually. And according to the WTO, reducing barriers within the international supply chain could increase worldwide GDP by almost 5% and total trade volume by 15%. For more information on how IBM can help make blockchain right for your business, please visit ibm.com slash blockchain. So that was one example. Let us look at one more exam, one more related example. This is in the area of food safety. Food also in industry like medicine, in many industries like food, drugs and medicine, ensuring safety requires traceability throughout the supply chain. For example, in the meat industry, one of the big scares recently you might have all heard of is the mad cow disease. If the meat bought came from one such cow, humans also could be affected by that disease. So, if and mad cow disease in those process countries and farms where they have thousands and thousands of cows, one cow can actually contaminate this entire batch of meat. So, and if the inspectors and customers find the mad cow disease virus in any one package, if they are not able to trace it, they may have to discard this entire lot of the produce causing so much losses. And many times customers also want to know when I bought this particular package of meat or any other vegetables and things like that. The problem in the case of vegetables and fruit for example, are the pesticides used. So, if it turns out this particular package of uh, meat or uh, vegetable or fruit uh, is contaminated one way or the other with some disease or uh, in the case of eggs the salmonella virus or pesticides in the case of medicine, we can avoid huge losses and big problems if we can trace it back to which package, which form it came from, which form this bunch of grapes came from, which lot of cows did this package of meat come came from of one of whom one of the which was affected by the mad cow disease. So, traceability in the food, food industry can have a very significant effect on food safety. We constantly keep hearing about of, uh, food poisoning and diseases spread, in, spread by various means, we can significantly control that and likewise with medicine. If it turns out that one batch of some medicine, say even headache medicine, uh, those who are studied marketing might remember the Tylenol case in the 70s a bunch of packages of Tylenol which is a simple headache medicine got laced with poison and it could not be traced. It could not be traced from which batch this particular contaminated bottle of Tylenol came from. So, the company had to discard every one of those packages causing millions of dollars of loss and more importantly they could not trace it and find out how this happened and can we avoid that from happening again. So, traceability is a very important aspect in the industries like food, drugs and medicine in ensuring their supply and where as you have seen while moving the goods from the producer to the consumer, if there are so many agencies involved, so many approvals involved, so many links involved, tracing them through the process in the physical world becomes a huge problem sometimes almost impossible. But as we have seen from the previous example, if this entire chain, entire supply chain is brought in under a blockchain, traceability becomes almost a matter of fact, somebody can go and easily do that. 
So, what is traceability? Traceability is the ability to trace the path of any bit of information in a transaction all the way to its origin in the supply chain. If it turns out that this particular package of meat is contaminated with mad cow disease, if there is traceability, I should be able to trace it all the way to the particular form from where it came from. If possible to particular cow it came from. If I notice that this bunch of grapes had very high level of pesticides, I with good traceability I should be able to trace it back all the way to which form, which farmer, which grower it came from. If a batch is contaminated, the need to trace its stores and eliminate it all affected products. And more importantly, it also helps us in making sure that it does not recur again. If it is traced back to one particular form, for example, where the farming practices might have been good, the water use might have been contaminated, then you will address that problem. It is restricted to that form. In the real world, it can be costly and time consuming and many cases where documentation is not very clear, especially in agricultural products, traceability may be impossible. A blockchain based application can make it much faster and cheaper. As we have seen, traceability is one of the key strengths that blockchain brings to business. So, here is an example of Walmart, Walmart being the world's biggest retailer and those of you who follow business in India, this is the company which has recently bought a big chunk of Flipkart, worked with IBM to provide traceability to its Walmart also is a big food, food seller, it is a big grocer. So, traceability is as important for them as to its customers. Here is a video of how Walmart did using blockchain. Meeting, I put him on the table and I said, you trace that exercise starts right now and we time how long it took him to get the information for each one of the pieces and all the way back to the farm. And I'm not going to do the doing next. <laughs> Good, very relevant for us. We all love mangoes, right? That is the example they have taken. This is a pilot. But we have to just get to this. <laughs> When a customer shops in our stores, we know they expect great prices, we know they expect fast, clean, and friendly service. But an unspoken expectation is that they expect the products that they buy in our stores to be safe. You know, when there's a food event or a food scare, what you want to do is you want to be fast, but you want to be right. Is that true? By food scare, he means that one or more packets or one more batches of a vegetable or a meat or something contaminated somebody being affected and the news spreads. So, when the news spreads, nobody knows which package came from, people are scared, they do not want to touch that product. So, that is what is he refers to as a food scare, there is a scare about food, that it is contaminated, poisoned or whatever. Food scare, what you want to do is you want to be fast, but you want to be right. That food product is guilty until proven innocent. We at Walmart will actually pull all the product until we know what is the implicated product and we can put the safe product back out. And so, imagine if we could pinpoint with certainty with the minutes, not days, that it was the implicated product. Walmart and IBM are working to make that a reality. If you think about the food system, it's pretty complex. It involves farmers, processors, distributors. And the way traceability is done today, each segment of the food system does it their own way. Most actually do it on paper or on systems that don't speak to each other. And so we can never have a full view of what's happening in the food system. What we hope to do with blockchain is bring all food safety system stakeholders and collaborate so that we do it one best way, we can do it very quickly and efficiently. Blockchain is a digital ledger that allows different segments of the food system to capture information about the product, what they've done to it, where that product has been. If we're linking that data with other uh, data points, the internet of things, all that information will use the insights that will allow us to have a safer, more affordable and sustainable food system. But we don't believe traceability is the goal. We believe that transparency is the ultimate goal. Blockchain will give us the ability to not only track where food came from, but how it was produced. Was it produced safely? Was it produced responsibly? Is it sustainably grown? How many grades of chef parts have left on that product? The food system is a shared responsibility. And for blockchain and traceability and transparency to work, we need a lot of people working together. So we're excited to be working with IBM on this blockchain initiative. But it's not just 
Dad had an idea. We actually have some of our suppliers participating in this pilot. We've got some universities also participating in the pilot. And so we'll make sure that all stakeholders work together for a safer and better future. So here we have seen two wonderful examples of applications of blockchain in the non-fintech world by big companies in the world to reduce cost, to reduce wastage, make processes faster, cheaper, more traceable, more importantly to ensure security, safety which is of very critical example. Now let us move on to a lighter example. I mentioned that blockchains are also ideal for um, crowdfunding and I have taken an example from a movie industry which I guess all of us would love and how do we crowdfund a movie? Uh, in the past couple of years in my home state there were two movies which were crowdfunded one of them was called Lucia the other one was called Jir Jembe. I know personally about the second movie Jir Jembe. it was funded by a group of friends who all knew each other who all went to the same school all of them put together, pulled together funds to produce this movie which won state awards and things like that. So in this case, it is a limited crowdfunding. We all know each other, everybody, all of them knew each other. So when they invested money into the process, they knew that it, they could track how it was spent. They could trust the people, trust, establishing trust was automatically done. They all knew each other. They knew that the moment we put in money for these activities, it would be spent on those activities. Now, if, how do we crowdfund a movie where the funders do not know each other? The producers do not know the funders, funders do not know the producers, funders themselves also do not know each other. How can we use blockchain to crowdfund a movie? So, let us take an example. <coughs> a bunch of funders, they are all across the world, they come on the internet, they meet with the producers and the director and they agree upon the quantum of funding. That is, we all agree that we are going to pull together 5 crores to produce this movie. I am not aware of the finances of the movie industry. I am assuming that 5 crores is enough to produce a good movie. Those of us who know better, pardon me. But we all agree upon that we will all put together 5 crores to produce a movie. And milestones and the fund release schedule offline. We all on the internet, we get off on a chat, we come on um, Skype or something and say, we are going to produce 5 crores and this is the order we are going to release it. You do the movie puja, we will release 50 lakhs. You, uh, you sign up the hero, we will release another 50 lakhs. You sign up the heroine, some similar account. You do 20 percent of the movie, we release X amount. You shoot two songs in Bangkok, we release 10 plus 10, 20 lakhs for each song, things like that. We define various milestones and say, if the producer and director produce evidence that they have reached that milestone, funds will be automatically released to them from the pool that we all have collected together. So we set up a blockchain, we agree upon the smart contracts at which for each milestone we set up a smart contract on the blockchain we have set up. Obviously, it is a, perm, it's a uh, permission blockchain, it also can, it should be a private blockchain because only the parties who are involved will be permitted to look at it, uh, make entries and approve them. After that, we set up a set of smart contracts for each of the milestones. As every milestone and we and all the funders will collect all the money, put them in a bank account. As we know, it is called an escrow account which is put in a trust with a bank and the smart contract is linked to this escrow, ac escrow account and there is one smart contract for each milestone reached. And we also agree upon how those smart contracts are validated. If he, if the producer says he shot this song in Bangkok, we know who approves that. And fund release is set up as smart contracts triggered by milestones. The producer is the one who miles the blocks to inform attaining the milestone. The producer is the one, he says, I have signed up the hero. I signed up the hero, I paid so much advance. Remember, as per our smart contract, when he signs up the hero, say some 50 lakhs is to be released to the producer. So, what is the validation? 
we can agree to some validation where either the hero or his agent comes onto the blockchain and with his digital signature or some other means which we have agreed, agreed upon verifies that the hero has been signed up and that amount was paid as an advance. So, when that when the conditions are met the first contract uh, smart contract fires and 50 lakhs gets taken from the escrow account gets deposited into the producers account and next let us say they go to Bangkok they shoot the two songs and again the producer says after each song say, he says we have shot the song. So, what is the verification in this case we may use something else we may use something like the local equipment supplier who lent it to them in Bangkok he, he certifies that yes they rented my equipment and used it or there may be a film authority in Thailand who probably have to permit these activities they approve they, they come to this and verify that yes they sought our approval sought the song and it is verified that the song was shot that will trigger the second smart contract release 10 lakhs again to the producer third milestone second song being shot same story. So, at each of these steps with and at any point we can also the funders also will know one we know that the activity that the producer claimed we have not seen the producer we do not know who it is we have not seen the director we do not know who the director is we can still trust them because there is transparent verification involved at every step verification they may go and claim, but the transaction goes uh, gets verified by third parties we have approved upon and once they have done that they cannot go back and say I did not I forgot to shoot this third song pay me extra I have to go there that would not be allowed because contract is for two, con two movies he cannot go and change that our initial contract was for two songs he cannot go and change that because it is in a blockchain as we know blockchains cannot be changed going back in the future and at any point all the funders we do not have to keep calling the producer and bugging at any point we know at what level the activities have happened how much activity has happened if there is a delay why where is the delay happening it is possible that there is a delay in signing up the heroine at the second step itself there may be a delay in signing up the heroine but every funder will come to know that there is a delay due to that not due to any other reason and it is very transparent and, mo and most importantly from the producer's perspective as and when he fulfills the details of the contract or the, the smart contract he does not have to fund wait for the funders to collect all the money. For example, smart contracts do not come into existence unless the money has been pulled and deposited into the escrow account which is verified by the bank which has managing the escrow account. So, producer does not have to worry yes does not have to worry that if I do the all this shooting will I get paid from the funders can I recover my money from the funders not he does not have to worry the smart contract takes care of that and it is and he also knows how much money is in the escrow account how much money is left how much he can he can plan accordingly and in the process the identified parties verify the transaction and appropriate smart contract fires and transfers the fund. So, here is one example where for something as nice an activity like crowdfunding a movie we can profitably make that process very transparent because crowdfunding there is always an issue in terms of whom are we funding is our money safe what will happen to our money especially in movie industries where transparency it is not exactly known for its transparency and traceability, but we can bring those two features and allow for crowdfunding. I love this topic I would like to fund I can fund all by itself, but I can get a pool of people to fund this movie and make the process transparent painless uh, verifiable to everyone and the same concept can be used for various other things it can be used for crowdfunding a charitable activity. We may want to fund building a school we give that to some agency how do we know that they have done it. So, we can establish a block trade blockchain to do that process. So, as we have seen enough examples of blockchains away from the fintech world also and we are discovering more and more uh, uses in the next session we will look at how blockchain is being used in governance how governments are using how NGOs are using blockchains for their activities. So, this brings us to the conclusion of lecture number 8. Thank you.